Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're gonna to be going over how I passed the Salesforce Business Analyst Certification exam. And a few items of housekeeping before we jump into the meat of the video, feel free to jump around. One, there's going to be timestamps down below. Two, all of the resources that I talk about will be linked down below and I'll differentiate whether they are free or paid resources, as well as this is going to be a whole series on my channel of how I passed all the different Salesforce exams. So as of recording this, I have passed five different exams. So in the next couple of weeks, you should see a bunch more of these types of videos on my channel or see the playlist down below. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the first aspect, which is going to be the, what is the Salesforce Business Analyst exam? So let's start off by talking about what is a Salesforce Business Analyst? So a business analyst is someone who goes into a business and works with all the different stakeholders on a project or in their business that they're working in, depending on if it's just a one-off project or if it's like a whole business that they are working with to gather requirements, to gather different features of a project or a product that they want to release. They're able to work with the executives. They're working with the end users who are going to be using this product. They're going to be working with maybe some customers as well. And then also with the people who are going to be building out the project. So these are gonna be people like the, the admins, the developers, and the architects to really pound out what this project is going to look like. And so the Salesforce business analyst is someone who does all of these things, but on the Salesforce platform. So with that being said, the exam really covers the different techniques and the different tools that a business analyst needs to know in order to be successful. So these are gonna be things like requirements. So now just reading this off of the exam outline, this is what the exam is gonna cover and what percentage of questions you'll see on the exam for each section. Um, so customer discovery is going to be 17%, collaboration and stakeholders is going to be 24%, and that's going to be the largest section. Then there's going to be business process mapping at 16%, requirements at 17%, user stories at 18%, and then user acceptance at 8%. And you can go ahead and feel free to go into each of these different sections and kind of learn what they mean, uh, but they're all... I guess those different tools and strategies and techniques that the business analyst uses to successfully deliver a project on time and hopefully within budget. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump into my background before taking the exam. So I took this in, I believe, October or November of 2022, so a couple months ago. And at the time of taking this, it was a around four or five months old certification. So not a lot of resources, but there weren't no resources. I had also been working on the Salesforce platform for over seven years at this point. First, for a few years um, as an end user, actually as a pool receptionist, um, I didn't really know what Salesforce was or that I was actually using Salesforce, but I kind of was able to understand things here and there. And then eventually I worked my way up to an admin and then to consultant and now working creating content like this. Personally, I had never been a business analyst, but I had worked really closely with business analysts to determine the different requirements of a project and what would be feasible versus what wouldn't be feasible, um, actually writing out user stories. So I had some business analyst job duties and functionalities, but I was not a formal business analyst. I understood a lot of the terminology and what it meant before going into the exam because I'd been working in that environment for a while. All right, so what did I use to study for the exam? Like I said before, this cert was four or five months old, so there was some uh, resources out there, not a lot of resources, and the resources that were out there were not quite vetted as like, this is the best and the greatest of what you need to do to understand and to be able to pass on your first try. Um, I do want to mention that I have created a course on this that currently has all of the written material. So it has a glossary, some notes, as well as a practice exam that'll be linked down below that I created after the exam with my husband who also took the exam. And we're hoping to have those videos out soon within that course. Um, there was a Udemy instructor class that was available at the time of taking this. And personally, I just didn't jam with the instructor. And so it was really hard for me to dredge through all the information that was there um, and felt really repetitive and like I couldn't really follow or understand. That's totally my my thing. I just didn't jive with them. And that's totally okay. But I didn't really feel like that helped too much and really confused a lot of things. I also used the full trail mix that Salesforce provided underneath the exam guide, which that will also be linked down below. And usually, it takes a, like a good week or so to get through the trail mix. However, I love using the natural reader plugin. Um, this will read it to me, the, the trail mix. I'll link that down below as well. It's a Chrome extension that will read it to you like in a kind of robot voice, which for me, I personally learn 
better when I can hear it rather than reading it. And so one, it sped things up and two, I comprehended a lot more, a lot faster. So it took me maybe three days to get through the full trail mix, uh, just listening to it while I was doing chores or folding laundry or whatever I was doing around the house. Personally, I did think that the trail mix helped me to understand it provided some tangible uh, examples for me to use and roll forward with. It didn't cover the full depth and breadth of the terms that I needed to know for the exam, which personally I thought this exam was pretty term heavy. And once you could understand the terms and you could read the question and really grasp the concept or the yeah, I guess the concept of the question, then you are able to narrow it down. One thing I will mention is that this exam is a little bit different from other exams where it was a choose one out of three questions or answers on a multiple choice rather than an admin exam, which is a choose like one out of four or two out of five or three out of five. And then after that, I used the two focus on force uh, practice exams that were uh, available at the time to really gauge my readiness and where I needed to study a little bit more. I think I scored on the 90s of both of them. And so I felt pretty ready to be able to pass that exam. And I think it has like a 70 or 72% required score. So you have to get like 42-ish questions correct. Um, and with that 90%, I felt pretty comfortable and I just studied going forward a review of the 90% and then also studied that 10% that I missed or that I struggled on to really kind of boost my knowledge in that section. And I used those practice exams to guide my further studying. I will also link down a blog down below of, uh, of someone whose blog I reviewed that had some of the other terms that um, were helpful that were missed possibly on the trail mix or that weren't, I guess, super clear to me that were gonna be on the exam. So I'll link that down below. And then I ended up taking the exam and I passed on the first time. I think it took me maybe an hour and 20 minutes to get through it. A lot of it was reading, understanding the question and then using context clues as well as the vocabulary of the exam. Let's go ahead and jump into my thoughts because I'm kind of starting to get <laughs> into my thoughts of the exam. I thought this exam was very, I guess, common sense focused where if you had learned the terminology and maybe you had spent some time working around business analysts or in a very agile project management style, then it was pretty easy to gauge which question was going to be correct or incorrect. Um, and again, this was one out of three, so it's a little bit easier than some of the other Salesforce exams, my opinion. All right, now how do I feel about this exam as a whole? Like I said, I felt like it was fairly reasonable to do. I know a lot of people have gone and taken it after they get their admin and their associate exams passed. Um, they recently, as of recording this, so it might have changed, but they removed the admin certification requirement to get this business analyst certification. While this exam was not super Salesforce in-depth knowledge heavy, it was helpful to have a knowledge of Salesforce because there was a lot of context given by that to the exam questions. So now where do I think that this exam is going to fit in within the ecosystem? I don't necessarily think that when you get this <laughs> certification that it's going to be the be all end all of certifications. I don't think that you're gonna get this and then you're gonna get like your favorite dream job that you've always been looking for. I don't think it's like that. I think it will help you regardless of what job you're going to go into within the Salesforce ecosystem to understand the discovery process, asking questions. If you are a solo admin or a solo architect or a developer to understand that different questions that you can ask and different techniques you can use to grasp what people are really trying to say when they say one thing. It's like when a toddler says, I want fishy crackers when they really want Cheez-Its. You can use your business analyst skills to ask questions like, do you mean this cracker that's somewhat similar, but isn't what you're saying? That's kind of the feel of what I think this exam is going to help you understand. I think it will help you regardless of what job you get, but I don't think it's gonna be like the dev two of Salesforce certifications, where if you get the certification, then it's pretty likely that you'll land a job in this particular role. All right, and now here are some additional resources that I have since found useful. Again, I do have a course that I made with my husband. It is currently just written materials but we're hoping to have the videos out soon. Personally, one thing that I find really useful is if I don't understand a particular concept within Salesforce or even the business analyst world of like, let's say user stories, that's a big part of this, then look up um, additional resources that may not be from Salesforce, like YouTube videos to help you better understand those concepts. There are lots of 
YouTube videos that will show you how to write down a user story and the best practices for user stories. And that has really helped a lot. Again, I would really focus heavily on the terms and the terminology and how you're going to use those within a Salesforce kind of specific context to help you understand what the question is really asking. And then also use a process of elimination for each question. Again, there's only three answers. So um, there's a pretty good chance that if you can eliminate one of them, that's a 50-50 chance that either one of them is gonna be correct. But with that being said, um, that's kind of my thoughts, my experience on taking the Salesforce Business Analyst exam. Personally, I think it's great for anyone on the Salesforce ecosystem or Salesforce ecosystem adjacent to take this exam to better understand the agile process as well as requirements gathering, different elicitation techniques to understand what your stakeholders are asking for, understanding user stories and how they're written and how they're meant to be taken. Those are all really awesome things to understand, regardless of whatever your job is. If you are a junior admin or even if you're a certified technical architect, I think they're all great certification and skills for everyone to know. So with that being said, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below and I will try and get back to you as soon as possible. You can check out the courses down below, like, subscribe. I would love to connect with you on LinkedIn and Twitter and those will be linked down below as well. Thank you so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.